Hello everyone and welcome to Metal Detecting Northern Colorado. My name is Michael and today I'm just going to go over some basics. So if you're new to metal detecting, this is going to help you out a lot. So the first thing I want to talk about is the equipment. You need a metal detector. And I guess real quick I would just say don't skimp on your metal detector. You don't need to spend a thousand dollars, but this little guy right here is the MineLab Vanquish 340. It's about two hundred dollars. I think it's the cheapest one that MineLab makes. Don't quote me on that. But for two hundred bucks it's a great machine. Yes, you can get one on Amazon for about $100. I do not recommend it. So get yourself a decent, reputable machine, either from MineLab, Garrett, Nocta. The list goes on, but buying on Amazon from China, not advisable. So the next thing you're going to need is a pinpointer. You don't need to break the bank on these. This one I think was $40. It is completely waterproof and I'll put a link down in the description. But for a $40 pinpointer, this thing has been really good to me. You don't need a fines belt. I metal detected for months without a fines belt. Just put the things in your pocket. Um, I know pros who still don't use a fines bag. Hand diggers, optional, good to have. And the last thing you're gonna need is a shovel. You don't have to break the bank on a shovel either. This thing was probably $30 at the local hardware store. It's also been great. If it breaks, you know what? It was only 30 bucks. Yes, you can get a $100 shovel. I don't recommend it if you're just starting out. Just get yourself a cheap hardware store shovel. Now, let's get right to it. Okay, switching over to first person here so you can see what I see. I'm gonna fire up the uh, Vanquish 340 here. And I love this machine because it's super simple. If you're a beginner, I, I just can't recommend it enough. This one's been really good to me. It's paid for itself twice over just in the last few years. Anyway, fire it up. You really don't need to do anything. Uh, this doesn't really have any, it really only has one mode. Uh, right now I have the uh, volume set up to medium. You have high, low, medium, and sensitivity. I'm gonna do, oh, just two bars there. I am in all metal mode, which just means it's going to hear everything, including iron. Uh, and I can turn off iron and you know the foil and things like that. But for today, we're going to go all metal mode. And I do recommend that you dig everything. And that means you're listening for everything. So I have some coins buried in the yard. And we're just going to go over. The first thing I want you to learn is pinpointing. Cannot stress how important it is to pinpoint your target. Certainly don't want to hit your target with a shovel. So let's go over that real quick. All right, so I'm just going to swing the coil back and forth. And there we go, we've got a target. So, so far, what I can tell is that the target somewhere around here. But to pinpoint, we're going to use the perpendicular method. So I have some chopsticks. I'm going to lay them down and just kind of get a feel for what it is that I'm doing with my eyes as I scan the coil over the target. So we know our target, just by the sound of the beeps here, is somewhere around here. But I really want to pinpoint what I'm going to call the Y axis here. I've got my chopstick here. We're going to go over and find our Y axis. So just going back and forth, I can tell that the target is somewhere along this line. The coil is going back and forth this way. The beeping is consistently right about here. But what I need to know next is where along this line is the target. So we're going to go perpendicular 90 degrees and then scan this way. So again, I know the target. The truth is I could probably dig it up right now. Some people will just use the pinpointer feature on the uh, machine itself. I don't recommend that. It's not accurate. I would rather teach you the right way, even if it takes a little bit longer, but we really want to find out exactly where along this line our target is. Okay, so we've swung around 90 degrees and we're just going to go back and forth along our Y axis, which is now our X axis. And we're just going to figure out where along that line the target is. And I can see it's a little bit off to the right. So my chopstick isn't exactly right on target. But that's about how much accuracy you're going to have if you're just using your coil to pinpoint. We really want to go 90 degrees and really find out exactly where along this line it is. So swinging again, 90 degrees. 
I can tell the target's probably somewhere around here. So I'm gonna lay this second chopstick here. We went this way first, now we've gone 90 degrees, and now we're gonna see how accurate I really was. Now I like to dig my plugs deep and wide. Not everyone is a fan of that, but I would rather dig too deep and too wide than to dig it too narrow and too shallow and risk having to dig it again and hit our target. You never know what's gonna come out of the ground. Certainly don't wanna damage it. So I'm gonna dig probably about like this. My target's probably right there, but we're gonna find out how accurate I was. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna start a good distance away. I just push down and lift. Come around, push down, lift a little bit. Now this soil is really loose. This is the garden, <laughs> so most of the time the soil is gonna be a lot more compact than this. So really all I need to do is push the shovel down, get way underneath the target, pop it out, and turn that over. So with any luck, our target should be somewhere in what would normally be a plug. Again, the soil's pretty loose here. Now it's time to get out the pinpointer and find out exactly where the target is. All right, so I got my uh, little carrot turned on here. It is in beep mode, so if I come over here, we know it's working. Every now and then I will check against my ring just to make sure it is turned on. And here we go, we're just gonna kinda move the pinpointer through the soil and see how accurate I was. I probably could have used one more scoop, but the main thing is I didn't hit it with the shovel. So let's, it's saying it's somewhere right there. Now the next thing I wanna go over is safety. So I wanna go over something really important here, and that's safety. You have no idea what's coming out of that hole. I have dug broken glass, needles, razors, knives, you name it. And I've actually cut myself a few times. So I learned the hard way, safety first. Get yourself a good pair of work gloves. Again, you just have no idea what's gonna come out of the hole. Now I know what's in the hole because I put it there. Let's get right back to it. Okay, so I got my gloves on, safety third. Here we go. I think the target is right there. So I was pretty close in the pinpointing. I'm just gonna pull out a clump of dirt here, kind of throw it out there and see, did we get it? We did. Can I find it? There it is. What do we get here? I forgot what I put in the ground. Oh, it's a dirty old penny. We're gonna repeat this a few more times and practice. Okay, so for the next target, I don't remember exactly where I put it, so we're just gonna kinda sweep along the garden here. Getting lots of low grunts, little pieces of iron. Okay, I've got a target here, and I did not put that there, so this is gonna be interesting. All right, so I know the target is somewhere along this line. We're gonna go perpendicular once again. Okay, and it seems that the target would actually be somewhere along this line. So I'm gonna move that one over. Let's just double check. All right, go perpendicular again. I'm gonna make an adjustment there. I think it's somewhere right there. Let's grab the shovel and find out. All right, so I'm just gonna dig right around here. Move the dirt over. I'm gonna grab the machine and see, is it in the plug or is it in the hole? Okay, it is in the plug. We got it out. So now, grab the pinpointer again. And let's just see, I'm gonna move the coil away from the pinpointer. Otherwise, this will make my machine go crazy. And we're just gonna, oh, I hear something. And again, I did not plant this, so <laughs> this is gonna be interesting to see what comes out of the garden. So just kind of following the sound of the beep. It's easy to lose, it happens to everybody. Oh, there it is. Tiny little piece of what looks like scrap aluminum. Huh, well, either way, pinpointing worked. And one less piece of trash in the garden. Okay, so last target. This time I'm not gonna use the chopsticks. We're just gonna kinda eyeball it because we're not gonna carry chopsticks around with us. I've got a target here. So I'm just gonna use my imagination here and just kind of imagine a line right about there. And you can find like a dirt clod or a stick or something to as a reference point. Yeah, so somewhere along that line there. So 90 degrees. All right, so I know our target is probably somewhere right there. So, shovel time. Keeping an eye on where I marked it visually. I'm gonna dig way deep. 
come down here and just pop out a plug. Let's see if we got it in the first scoop or if we need to do another one. So fire up the pin pointer. And again, this is why I dig my plugs deep and wide. So I'm just gonna grab the coil here. So it is definitely out of the hole. And so we know our target is somewhere here. I went back and forth with the coil this way. I'm not gonna waste time with pinpointing it once it's out. I'm just gonna grab the pin pointer and just kind of go along that line. There it is. Yep, and I see it. And we have a dime. Very cool. All right, and so the last thing I wanna go over is the speed of the swing. You don't wanna to go too fast. You could miss that diamond ring you've been looking for. So we really wanna go low and slow, and it's gonna look something like this. All right, so low and slow looks something like this. And we don't wanna go back and forth. You'll see some people just going crazy like this. I, I don't recommend it. You really wanna go low, right above the grass. I'm gonna fire up the machine here. Just go low and slow. So after you've swept once, take a small step, back and forth. Now, the only time I might go a little faster is if I'm just trying to scan for what they call hot spots. We're just looking for targets in general, listening for those beeps. But as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a one swing left to right, and then I take a step forward. One more small step. Now I'm hearing lots of little pieces of metal here. I'm just gonna ignore those. What I'm listening for is a really loud, consistent beep. Now I've done the backyard multiple times, so I know there's not much left out here. What I really wanna go over is just what a low and slow swing looks like. Back and forth, small steps, kind of like you're mowing the lawn, but with a pair of scissors. <laughs> That's about the speed we're moving here. All right, and so as we're going low and slow, what we're listening for is just repeatable signals. If the numbers or the sounds are jumping all over the place, I'm probably gonna skip over it. Um, I normally recommend to dig everything, but for today's purposes, we're just gonna go low and slow and listen for something repeatable. As you can see, or as you can hear, we got a grunt and a high tone. Not really repeatable. Got a faint something there. So something like that I would dig. Now that's a little deep for today's purposes. We're just gonna keep going. All right, so what we're hearing is a pretty consistent. And you hear that double tap? What that usually means is you have something on edge, something flat and on edge. Now I'm gonna go 90 degrees. Same thing, we're getting a double tap. So let's get a little bit closer and see if we have anything down there. Okay, so getting in a little closer here. Let's see what the metal, see what is making the metal detector go crazy and give that double tap. Is we have a nickel standing on edge. And this is gonna happen in the ground. Not all coins are laying flat in the ground. So this guy was on edge, which is why we were getting that double tap. But the main thing we were listening for is that consistency, a repeatable tone. And there we go. So I realize this video isn't going to answer all of your questions. There's no one video that's going to answer all of your questions. So my advice is to keep watching videos just like these. You know, you ask 10 different people how to do anything, you're gonna get about 10 different answers. So keep watching YouTube, practice, 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 dig everything, and we'll see you next time.